Hiya, thank you for turning on the DVD. Welcome to a new term. Trust that you're excited to be back again. We are doing a very echoey version of uh, Is That God? and just trying to get a better picture of who God is. And, and again, I've been on a bit of a personal journey with this, I'm sure you have too, as we think about what God looks like, what, how he relates to us, what, what it is about him that we we can understand from the scriptures that, that will really help us develop a, a, a godly spirituality and a good attitude to him and to life and to others and everything else, because those things matter. The way that we think about God often translates into the way that we treat other people, the way that we act towards, uh, act in our prayers and in our devotions and, and our understanding of, of, of who we are before the Lord. So. The, the most important and the first thing I want to say is simply that God looks like Jesus. There's this amazing verse in, in Colossians where it talks in, in chapter 1, he is the image of the invisible God. We know that we were meant to be images of God and we are, uh, but that is marred in, in, in certain ways. But Jesus is the full image of God. Everything that we need to see about God we see in, <coughs> in Jesus. In fact, Paul goes on to say that in, uh, in that was in verse 15. In verse uh, 18, it says, uh, sorry, verse 19, it says, God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. The fullness of God is in Jesus, everything. Uh, God is full, obviously, and, and all of that fullness is in Jesus. There's nothing in God that isn't in Jesus. And so if we are thinking about or reading about or or learning about a God that doesn't look like Jesus, then we're not reading or learning or thinking about the true living God. God looks like Jesus. And that's a fantastic help for me, for when I read some of the passages in the Old Testament that puzzle me, some of the passages even in the New Testament that, that puzzle me, uh, when God seems to do things that don't look like Jesus, and I have to go back and say, actually, that, that's either part of a developing revelation of who God is, that finds its fullness of, in Christ, or I'm reading it wrong. And I need to read it in a different way to help me see uh, the truth of who God is, that God looks like Jesus. In the Old Testament, of course, we have a few images of God that are really helpful. Uh, one is the image of king. Uh, Old Testament people were used to the idea of king. Uh, we are a little bit, but our queen is rather different from their kings, I think. Uh, so the idea of king is someone that that will protect us, that will lead us, that will, um, an idea of king who we'll, we'll need to pay taxes to, that we'll need to uh, honour, and, uh, and, and some of those things are, are echoed in our understanding of God. It's a, perhaps a primitive understanding, but it's there, isn't it? He is the king above all gods. That's a, a continuing theme throughout, throughout the scripture, that God is our king. And, uh, but it's a voluntary kingship. Uh, the covenant that God makes with us through Exodus and then the new covenant in Jesus is a voluntary heart thing. It's not an imposed thing. The taxes we pay are not taxes, they're offerings. The throne that we build him is, is a throne of worship and praise. And uh, his throne is, is now in our hearts. The throne of Jesus was, of course, the cross. Uh, all very different from a, a, a traditional understanding of king. And that helps us to see that image of God as king, helps us to see God's authority, his rule, his right to reign, his ability to say what we should do. Uh, important, but uh, there's some, some differences. There's a lot of ideas in the Old Testament and the New Testament about God being our judge. And, and that's important too. There's a a whole, a whole load of stuff that, that pictures of God as a, a righteous judge. And, and actually we need a righteous judge, particularly if we are poor, particularly if we are the underdog, particularly if we are being oppressed, if we're being marginalised, if we're not one of the elite. We, we need a righteous judge to stand up for, the, for justice. And God is that. And, and that's a powerful image of who God is on the side of right and truth and justice. Uh, that's a, a powerful thing. Another image we have of God is God as creator. Uh, it's not a major theme throughout the scripture, but it's certainly there at the beginning in one or two Psalms and a few other places as well. And it finds its expression, I think, in Proverbs and places like that where, 
where the wisdom that we need to live comes because God is creator and uh, he's set it all up, he knows how it works and so when we live in line with his principles, when we live in line with the grain of the universe, then we live better. God is creator. Uh, and lastly and most importantly, God is father. Uh, that's not an Old Testament concept. There's a couple of places where uh, God is the father of the nation of Israel, but Jesus introduces us to God who we can call Abba, a God who is father, who wants to be father to us. How great the love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that's what we are, John says in 1 John 3. When you pray, say, Abba, Father. How much more does your Father know and love and care for you? There's a, a, just a tremendous truth about God being Father, and we need that revelation. We need that understanding to know who we are, because we are in his image, uh, because we're built to look like him, we're built to have the family likeness. We are made to be loved uh, by Father God. Uh, that's Jesus' unique contribution to history of Christian thought, I think, that, uh, that, that God is Father. And if we grab hold of that and know that, then it's just a powerful, life-transforming thing. Uh, so pray for that. Pray for that revelation of God as Father, more of that. Pray that you would know more of the love of the Father uh, over this season. Bless you. Have a good time as you think about this stuff. See you in a bit.